Hello, Miss Caldwell's class. I am back with crossover again. I hope you guys are doing well. Of course, I miss you. And I hope you've been excited about me getting to the next part of the book. Um, last time I read, I asked you guys to think about what basketball rule number three meant to you. And basketball rule number three said, never let anyone lower your goals. Others' expectations of you are determined by their own limitations of life. The sky is your limit, sons. Always shoot for the sun and you will shine. So you were supposed to let me know what this meant to you. Remember, there was really no wrong answer. It's just your interpretation of that. And then, of course, always try to use some evidence from the text. So when I read this, the first thing that I look at when it says, never let anyone lower your goals. The word your sticks out to me because they're my goals. It's what I want to achieve, not what anyone else wants. And then the next thing that the text says is that others' expectations of you are determined by their limitations of life. Now, we know that expectations are something that someone expects because we have that word expect in there of you are determined by their limitations All right look at the word limitations the first part of that word is limit we know that limit means you can't kind of go past a certain point but there's a limit of you can buy one item at the store um, so others expectations of you are determined by their limitations of life so when I look at all of that it makes me think that they think what I'm able to do is based off of whatever is in their head on what they're limited to do. So they're kind of putting that off on me. But if I go back to the first sentence, it said, never let anyone lower your goals because they're my goals, not someone else's. Then it goes on to say, the sky is your limit, sons. Always shoot for the sun and you will always shine. The sky is your limit. We know the sky is way up there and the sun is very bright. So if you always shoot for the sun, it says you will shine. So I think about that, I think if the sun is up in the sky, it's as high as we can get. It's the brightest star that we have. So if I get just close enough to the sun, I might not be the brightest thing out there, but I will definitely be shining because I am shooting so high. So when I put all of that together, what basketball rule number three means to me is don't let what other people think is the most they can do make me think that it's the most that I can do. I'm always going to shoot as high as I can go, no matter what anyone else thinks that they can do, because that doesn't have anything to do with me. I'm going to shoot for the sun, and I might not reach it, but I'll at least shine because I shot so high. So if you didn't get to answer that one, you can still let me know what it means to you, since now that you know what my thinking is. I really want you to be metacognitive. Think about your thinking. All right, we stop on page 84, so I'm going to start there. Bad news. Oh, that's, I'm sorry, that is where we were supposed to figure out if he was going to take the heat for his brother when they passed the note. Let's see. Bad news. I sit in mom's office chair for an hour reading brochures and pamphlets about the Air Force and the Marines. She's in and out handling principal stuff, a parent protesting her daughter's F, a prank substitute teacher crying, a broken window. After an hour, she finally sits in the chair next to me and says, the good news is, I'm not going to suspend you. The bad news is, Josh, is that you're not, neither Duke nor any other college except cheaters? Because I can't seem to find a decent man out of you. Perhaps the Air Force and Marines can. I want to tell her I wasn't cheating, that this is all JB and Miss with T's fault, that this will never happen again, that Duke is the only thing that matters but a water pipe burst in the girl's bathroom. So I tell her I'm sorry, it won't happen again, then head off to my next class. Gym class. It's supposedly be about balls, volleyballs, basketball, softball, soccer balls, sometimes sit up and always sweat. But today, Mr. Lane's standing in front of the class. A dummy laid out on the floor, plastic, armless, torso cut in half. I'm not paying attention to anything he's saying or to the dummy because... I'm watching Jordan pass notes to Miss Sweet Tea, and I wonder what's in the notes. Josh, why don't you come up and assist me? Huh? What? The class snickers before I know it. I'm tilting the dummy's head back, pinching his mouth, blowing in his, pinching his nose and blowing in his mouth, and pumping his chest 30 times, all the while thinking that is life really fair? 
One day, I'll be the one writing notes to some sweet girl, and JB will have to squash his lips on some dunny sweaty mouth. So we see he did take the heat for his brother. Would you have taken the heat? Or would you have turned it in? I'm watching Jordan pass notes. Second quarter. We've made it almost halfway through. Probably about a third of the way. Conversation. Hey, JB. I played a pickup game at the rec today. At first, the older guys laughed and wouldn't let me in unless I could hit from half court. Of course I did. All net. I wait for JB to say something, but he just smiles, his eyes all moony. I showed them guys how the Bells play. I scored 14 points. They told me I should try out for junior varsity next year, because I got hops. JB, are you listening? JB nods, his fingers typing away at the computer, chatting, probably with Miss Sweet T. I told the big guys about you, too. They said we could come back and jump with them anytime. What do you think about that? Hello, Earth to JB. Even though I know he hears me, the only thing JB is listening to is the sound of his heart bouncing on the court of love. Conversation. Dad, this girl is making Jordan act weird. He's here, but he's not. He's always smiling. His eyes get all spacey whenever she's around. And sometimes when she's not. He wears your cologne. He's always texting her. He even wore loafers to school. Dad, you gotta do something. Dad does do something. He laughs. Filthy. Talking to your brother right now would be like pushing water uphill with a rake, son. This isn't funny, Dad. Say something to him, please. Filthy, if some girl done locked up JB, he going to jail. Let's go get some donuts. All right, I want us to look at where it says, Filthy, talking to your brother right now would be like pushing water uphill with a rake, son. What do we think that means? Because can we actually push water uphill with a rake? No. So think about that. What would pushing water uphill with a rake mean? Basketball rule number five. When you stop playing your game, you already lost. Show off. Up by 16 with six seconds showing JB smiles. Then struts, sidesteps, stutters, spins, and sinks. A slick, slick, sliding, sweet seven-foot shot. What a show-off. Out of control. Are you kidding me? Come on, ref. Open your eyes. Ray Charles could have seen that kid walked. Call the traveling violation. You guys are terrible. Mom wasn't at the game tonight, which meant that all night, Dad was free to yell at the officials, which he did. Mom calls me into the kitchen. After we get home from beating St. Francis, normally she wants me to sample the macaroni and cheese to make sure it's cheesy enough. Or the oven baked fried chicken to make sure it's not greasy and stuff. But today, on the table is some gross looking orange creamy dip with brown specks in it. A tray of pita bread triangles beside it. Maybe mom is having one of her book club meetings. Sit down, she says. I sit as far away from the dip as possible. Maybe the chicken is in the oven. Where's your brother, she asks. Probably on the phone with that girl. She hands me a pita. Uh, no thanks, I say. Then stand up to leave. But she gives me a look that tells me she's not finished with me. Maybe the mac and cheese is in the oven? We've talked to you about your grandfather, she says. He was a good man. I'm sorry you never got to meet him, Josh. Me too. He looked cool in his uniforms. That man was way past cool. Dad said he used to curse a lot and talk about the war. Mom's laugh is short. Then she's serious again. I know we told you Grandpa died after a fall, but the truth is, he fell because he had a stroke. He had a heart disease. Too many years of bad eating and not taking care of himself. And so, what does this have to do with anything? I ask, even though I think I already know. Well, our family has a history of heart problems, she says. So we're going to start eating better, especially Dad. And we're going to start tonight with some hummus and pita bread. For my victory dinner? Josh, we're going to try to lay off the fried foods and golden dragon. And when your dad takes you to the recreation center, no Paula's or Krispy Kreme afterward, understand? 
and I understand more than she thinks I do. But is hummus really the answer? Thirty-five eighteen is the final score of game six. A local reporter asked JB and I how we got so good. Dad screamed from behind us. They learned from the man. The crowd of parents and students behind us laughed. On the way home, Dad asked if we should stop at Pollard's. I tell him I'm not hungry, plus I have a lot of homework, even though I skipped lunch today and finished my homework during halftime. Too good. Lately, I've been feeling like everything in my life is going right. I beat JB in Madden. Our team is undefeated. I scored an A-plus on the vocabulary test. Plus, while I was away at a conference, which means no assistant principal. I'm a little worried, though, because as Coach likes to say, you can get used to things going well, but you're never prepared for when something goes wrong. I'm on a free throw number 27. We take turns, switching every time we miss. JB has hit 40, the last 12 in a row. Filthy, keep up, man, he says. Dad laughs loud and says, Filthy, your brother is putting on a free throw clinic. You better... And suddenly he bows over, a look of horror on his face, and starts coughing while clenching his chest. Only no sound comes out. I freeze. Okay, we're going to stop right there. What do you think is going to happen next? I want you to make an inference. Use what we've read in the text, plus what you just know about life. And I want you to come up with what you think is going to happen next and why. You know, you can comment below. You can message me on Class Dojo or the Google Classroom because I want to post this in both places. But I want to know what you think is going to happen next. We made it to page 103. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and I will be posting again soon. Take care. Bye.